the first first announcement is uh, i should con- because this is going to be our last grand rounds with uh, professor antony and i'm sure that many are going to watch it even after the uh, uh, after the program is over on the youtube so um, first of all i really thank uh, dr harsha for having conducted all these meetings so nicely so smoothly and taking efforts to uh, you know arrange this and i really 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 thank uh, dr harsha from my heart sarsha and foundation second thing is i want to uh, congratulate dr harsha uh, for uh, starting his uh, new venture sarsha and foundation in hyderabad it's going to turn up to be a very very good uh, hospital there are three partners in it and uh, all the three are my students i'm so proud to say that uh, we are going to have uh, one of the wonderful hospitals in uh, hyderabad and uh, we are going to inaugurate that on uh, 7th and 8th of uh, may with a workshop and uh, in case uh, you are interested my dear uh, friends pgs you can register and you can contact dr harsha harsha will give you uh, his phone number and please contact him and it's going to be a, a real treat right from basic till very advanced rheumatology so um, the next person i want to thank is professor antony professor antony has been very kind enough to impart knowledge i am sure that any busy practitioner he is operating almost every day many many cases both uh, everywhere uh, i don't want to uh, exactly you know uh, mmc is the most wanted teacher uh, outside is the most wanted surgeon uh, in chennai so um, despite that despite that busy schedule he has put forward his efforts to uh, you know teach the uh, exam going pgs i really appreciate uh, professor antony right from my heart and uh, he's put in a lot of effort not that uh, just like that ask two questions and leave them i am seeing every uh, grand rounds is extending for at least 2 hours 2 hours to 2 and a half hours he is examining right from basic till advanced questions and uh, i'm sure that this is going to be a encyclopedia he being an encyclopedia is this is going to be an encyclopedia for all exam going pg so tell this to all your other uh, classmates who are going exam going ask them to see it uh, i should thank dr ranjani madam uh, who is going to present today a case of ca maxilla and uh, this uh, is going to be on the nose and this will be the final grand rounds uh, and i wish all the students who are appearing for the exams all the very best uh please excuse me i have a very uh, you know advanced skull based lesion it's a fox meningioma uh, intracranial and i'm going to start my surgery now so i may not be able to join you but definitely i'll be seeing the recording uh so thank you professor antony from my heart and uh, uh, i don't have words so over to you professor antony thank you janagram i know how, how busy a surgeon you are in spite of that doing this for the post graduates where you don't have uh direct uh, uh students there uh, who are going to take exam but uh, i know you are i already told you you are a congenital chronic teacher so you have a style of teaching so uh, we thank you all of us thank you you very much you are a big tree under which the uh, all the students come for uh, knowledge uh, before uh, passing ent and after passing ent so grow more so that more people will be uh, learning from you thank you very much thank you antony thank you so i think over to dr ranjani and you can start your case presentation and uh, uh, professor antony will be examining you yes he actually usually they don't keep the cm axilla as a long case but if they never there is a two cases uh Uh, we don't uh, uh, differentiate whether it's a long case or short case. Then uh, uh, we'll have a uh, uh, equal discussion. So uh, you present this, but uh, we'll discuss. But it will be usually a short case only. Okay, start presenting. Thirty-eight okay, uh, year old female from Nagapattinam, who is a farmer, came to the hospital with. complaints of right sided nasal obstruction for the past 4 months and complaints of right sided nasal discharge for the past 4 months coming to the history of presenting illness 
uh, patient had complaints of right sided nasal obstruction for the past four months, which was insidious in onset, progressive in nature, now has complete obstruction of the right nasal cavity, not relieved Anjali, by medications Anjali. or steam inhalation. Yes, Anjali, uh, yes. There is a, uh, what you are doing now is presenting uh, history. Presenting okay. history, you can describe it in any words you like. But uh, complaints usually described in the patient's words. Same, same, uh, 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 same words got to be used or same uh, uh, description got to be there. So here you are, it's a history of presenting illness. It's not complaints of complaint is over. Okay. So patient patient gives history of right to the natal obstruction. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. The nasal obstruction was not relieved by medications or steam inhalation. No specific Thank aggravating you. factors Thank associated you. with right side facial pain. Complaints of right sided nasal discharge for the past four months, which was insidious and onset, mucoid initially and later became blood stained, discharge on and off, not foul smelling, no aggravating or relieving factors. The patient gives history of epistaxis for the past four months, three episodes, spontaneous bleeding, stops on local pressure, moderate amount, no aggravating or relieving factors. The patient also gives history of decreased smell perception, also history of dental pain right-sided for the past three months, also history of epiphora on and off. No history of headache, no no history of post nasal drip, no history of facial swelling, no history of frequent sneezing, no history of loosening of tooth, no history of dental infection, no history of snoring or mouth breathing, no history of numbness over face, no history of fever, no history of trauma, no history of restricted mouth opening, no history of vision disturbances, diplopia or protrusion of eyes, no history of ulcer over cheek or palate, no history of loss of weight or loss of appetite, no history of neck swelling, no history of dysphagia, dyspnea, voice change. No history of ear discharge, hard of hearing, ear pain, tinnitus, or vertigo. Okay. What are all the positive histories? Can you go to that slide again? Yes, sir. Yeah. The patient has nasal obstruction right-sided for four months, along with nasal discharge, which was blood stained on and off. Also gives history of epistaxis for four months and also uh, gives uh, smell perception decrease, dental pain, and epiphora. No facial swelling, no orbital complaints, no, no oral sir. complaints, no oral complaints. Only dental pain is there, sir. No other complaints. How are you going to present this as a uh, PA? Malignant growth. I'll see. Come. Sir. Okay. What are the, how do you classify uh, symptomatology of uh, PA maxilla? Symptomatology of maxilla is being grouped into five, sir. It can be nasal symptoms, oral symptoms, ocular symptoms, facial symptoms, and neurological symptoms. So what are uh, the symptoms you have now? Uh, the patient has nasal symptoms, has obstruction and discharge, epistaxis, and has uh, smell disturbances. Uh, the patient has oral symptoms as well. The patient has dental pain. Dental pain can be a neurological also. Okay, sir. Could be neurological as well. Uh, the patient has no facial or uh, neurological or uh, ocular uh, symptoms, sir. Otherwise, patient doesn't have a uh, history suggestive of extension out of the nose and paranoia. Sinus. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Yes. Uh, so, uh, what are the phases of CA maxilla? Phases of CA maxilla? Yes, sir. It is called Robin's phases of CM axilla, it is into four phases phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. Phase one is when the patient presents as sinusitis, uh, has symptoms of sinusitis, and phase two is when the patient proceeds to have a bony erosion or a periosteitis, and the patient will have a dull aching pain. And phase three, when the patient progresses to have neurological involvement, when the patient has deep pain, and uh, phase four is when the patient has resistant metastasis. Okay, so your your case will be between phase one and phase two. Phase two, yes. Sir. Okay. Right. Yes. Uh, very difficult to find. Proceed. Coming to the past history, sir. 
the patient has uh, no comorbidities no history of previous surgery no history of previous dental extraction no history of drug allergy no history of blood transfusion personal history consumes mixed diet normal bowel and bladder habits no history of tobacco or alcohol usage no history of uh, bathing in ponds and menstrual history regular cycles she is married and has two children family history belongs to poor socio economic status significant family history otherwise any any family history of uh, uh, nasal surgery any family history of malignancy any family history of uh, any other conditions like this no sir no other history of malignancies in the family or no similar complaints in the family okay so this is a patient who has got a nasal obstruction nasal discharge which doesn't yes, go post nasal doesn't go post nasally epistaxis or was the discharge any time blood stain yes sir it was occasionally blood stain occasionally blood stain okay so what is the commonest uh, disease which produces nasal obstruction blood stain nasal discharge and uh, um, uh, bad odor coming from the nose in the children in children sir uh, it could be because of any impacted foreign body okay if it occurs at a 60 year old male what is the common cause it should be malignancy sir in case of unilateral okay if it comes around 40 45 years male uh, uh, uh it takes bath in the in the ponds often uh, could be because of rhinos pruritiosis sir okay uh, right. what's your uh, Um, uh, on examination finding. Yes, sir. So uh, you are talk, you are you are discussing a patient. Yes, sir. Who is about uh, what age of the patient? Thirty-eight year old female, sir. Thirty-eight old female. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, who has got a nasal obstruction, nasal discharge, and epistaxis, uh, yes, epistora, and uh, hypospemia. Uh, hypospemia. Okay. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. the most probable diagnosis is there got to be a nasal mass yes sir some sino nasal mass is yes. sino nasal mass yes so uh, then um, sino nasal mass which can be benign or malignant right yes sir so what is the the benign mass you can have in the nose uh, benign mass could be uh, inverted papilloma sir inverted papilloma okay then yes, sir. Uh, it can be a malignant disease okay yes. go go proceed yes sir on general examination the patient was conscious oriented to place person time a febrile moderately built and nourished no pallor ichthyosis cyanosis clubbing lymphadenopathy or pedal edema vitals were stable on systemic examination uh, cvs rs uh, appeared normal per abdomen soft non tender no organomegaly cns is normal no spinal tenderness and no swellings over the skull head and coming to the ent examination examination of the nose so the external contour of the nose root to bridge supra tip tip ala column ala naso labral groove naso maxillary groove naso alveolar groove appear normal in this patient and coming to the anterior rhinoscopy findings the patient has a septal deviation to the left side and uh, in the right nasal cavity an irregular friable mass with everted edges was seen completely filling the nasal cavity till the vestibuli and on probing firm to hard in consistency was sen- sensitive to touch and bleed on touch friable mass how is the firm to hard in consistency sir how the firm mass uh, i mean How a friable mass will be formed to all in consistency? Is mm-hmm. a friable mass? How it yes, will be hard? Sir. How it will be hard? You are contradicting. Okay. The friable mass may be formed. Okay, sir. May not be hard. Okay. Okay, sir. Then, uh, then le- left nasal cavity appeared normal. Post nasal examination, post three end of septum. On probing, on probing where it is attached to. Uh, the mass couldn't be probed uh, along, sir. It was still the vestibule. Okay. A huge, big mass. Yes. Post-nasal examination. Yes, sir. 
Posterior end of septum was normal. Coina was free. Bilateral East Asian tubary wise, first of Rosenmiller were found to be normal. Okay. And airway patency test, Cottle's test was negative. Cotton wool test, there was decreased movement on the right side. Cold spatula test, decreased fogging on the right side. And uh, on smell uh, examination, decreased smell perception on the right side. And uh, no paranasal sinus tenderness. Examination of oral cavity showed no dental caries, loose tooth, or any swelling in the oral cavity. Oropharynx appeared normal. Ideal was normal. Coming to the there next. Is, there, there was a the question is there is an history of epitaxis can do the probing. You do what is called a controlled probing. You first touch the mask. The mask is not bleeding. Then you gently try to, to probe it. Of course, you won't probe it in the case of a. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, DNA, but you can uh, you can probe in in conditions even like a rhinoscopiosis, malignancy, all the things to see the attachment. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Then, sir. Okay. Then. Neck examination. Uh, laryngeal contour was normal. Trachea was midline. Laryngeal carpet is present. No palpable you, cervical. Why you, you want to, to look for cervical? Sir, so in case it is a malignant lesion. Where will be the uh, the second test. In case of a cyanonasal uh, malignancy, uh, it could uh, be in the retropharyngeal as occult nodes, sir. In case it is involving the posterior uh, maxillary wall and posterior uh, pterygopeltine forces. In case yes. it's of an anterior, uh, yes, sir. In case of anterior uh, maxillary wall in, uh, involvement or coming to the palate or oral cavity, it can go to the submandibular gland. And finally, can drain into level two nodes as well from the retropharyngeal as well. Can come to level two nodes. Level two nodes. Okay. Uh, what is uh, retrograde permeation? Sir. What is retrograde permeation? When the ostium is occluded tightly, there will be a retrograde flow of lymph uh, lymph from along with that cells, uh, uh, lymphatics. Along with that, you can send like the cancer cells. So whenever there is a tumor which is completely upsetting the uh, the ostium, through the ostium, this this lymphatic drains. So if it's completely yes. upsetting, in spite of there is no involvement of a cheek or involvement. The patient of can have no. The patient can have yes. some bad blood flow. Okay. 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 Um, coming to eye examination, bilateral vision normal. Bilateral what EOM you, is what full. You, what do you, what do you expect in a C M macula? In case of a CA maxilla, uh, a T3 or a T4A tumor or T4B tumors, I would expect uh, the patient to have proptosis, uh, visual disturbances, restriction of EOM. Patient can earlier symptoms of diplopia. Patient can present with a chemotic enlarged eye. Common thing is proptosis. What type of proptosis we get in the uh, CA maxilla? In case of CA maxilla, the patient will have an eccentric proptosis, sir. I will be, be displaced upwards, outwards, laterally. And laterally. Where will you okay. get the eye which is displaced anteriorly? In case of axial proptosis, in case of any intraorbital tumors or any uh, retrobulbar tumors or any retrobulbar uh, lesions can cause axial proptosis. Where will you get the, uh, uh, the proptosis in the case of a CA uh, anterior much? I mean, CA much. Uh, where, sir? Where? I will be. I will be pushed, pushed lat. I will be pushed uh, laterally and outwards. Outwards, forwards, and laterally. Laterally, yes. Uh, okay. So, okay, uh, uh, how much amount of uh, tumor required to cause a proposal? Volume. At least more than 2 mm in length is proptosis, sir. How much volume? At okay. least 5 to 6 cc. Yes, sure, not sure, sir. Sir? You are guessing, right? I also, I also so forgot. You see the volume. The volume required to cost the minimal proptosis. That is what to check it out. Right, then uh, what else do you, you look for in the eye? 
one is crop process then uh vision sir i have to check the vision uh, then extra ocular movements okay then corneal reflex okay right fine um next next exam is okay next for uh, the exam cranial nerves sir uh in my patient i found only olfactory nerve to be involved because the patient has decreased smell sensation on the right side alone all other cranial nerves were normal sir uh, how do you check smell sensation sir how do you check smell sensation smell sir i did a subjective testing sir with coffee but you can you have other uh, methods of testing as well sir objective how you, test uh, how do we check with coffee powder I ah, uh, I asked the patient to close the left nostril, and asked her to uh, smell it, and the other way also on the le- I asked her surprise. to close the. I surprised nobody breathes to each nostril separately. Okay. How the patient gives history of loss of smell when the other nostril is not open? When you breathe, the air goes to both. Right. Yes, sir. Then how how the patient? Gets but the but she is giving only a decreased sensation of smell, sir. She still That's has okay. some sensation of smell intact from the left on. side. No, no, you don't understand. Yes. Ah, there yes. No, there is no loss of smell. There is only eye for smell. Okay. Okay. But the patient opposite side air goes inside. Yes, okay. sir. Then how the patient can resume? Hypospadia unilaterally. We used to tell even in hearing, you can't find out uh, 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 decreased hearing or uh, unilaterally unless you use um, uh, other methods like over the phone or the patient calls from okay. one side. You can't locally the same. But unilaterally, okay. it's very difficult to for the patient to uh, identify and tell you. Maybe you can find out, but patient will not tell you. Okay. Then, okay. uh, uh, what are all the cranial nerves you should you should check first? Uh, uh, you should check uh trigeminal. How do you check trigeminal? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Trigeminal has uh, three divisions. Sir, trigeminal nerve has ophthalmic division, maxillary, and mandibular. So, for the ophthalmic division, uh, we can check the corneal wow. reflex. For maxillary, uh, sensations over the cheek region. and for mandibular region uh, mandibular nerve we can uh, chewing of uh, masticatory muscles can be checked for sir it is both sensory and motor okay and, and also in cm maxilla i would like to examine the mainly the 2 3 4 6 sir in case of any ocular involvement okay so there is no ocular in that no uh, not for this patient patient gives a patient gives history of uh, epiphora yes sir what is the uh, one thing could be because of the nasal obstruction uh, causing a nasal lacrimal duct obstruction in the medial did you, wall did you do uh, pro plus uh no sir the i for the prestige uh, lacrimal fossa looks for water no. coming in you should have done that okay sir on examination they like to see the whether you get syringe or not okay sir Okay, then you got to find out the is obstruction, where is obstruction, whether it's a soft obstruction or hard obstruction, whether it is on the uh, canalicular obstruction or on the uh, common duct obstruction or uh, all these things. Oh, okay, 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 sir. Okay, then, okay, sir. okay. When did you get a cranial nerve? Low cranial nerve. Lower, lower cranial nerve, sir. Uh, when the tumor uh, is very advanced, uh, it if it involves in nasal pharynx in case of a T four B tumor, uh, in that case it can cause lower cranial nerves. Sir, nasal pharynx or... goes to the lower cranial nerve. Sir, so the lower cranial nerve. So it's because of skull I based agree. emotion, sir. I agree. I agree. Nasal T four B pharynx produces lower cranial palsy. But yes, oh. sir. Uh, because of uh, skull-based erosion, sir, direct extension, one way. Very 
sales were never correct where is the due to for that entire let the it's, it's also it because of retroferential node uh, because of the due to enlarged due to for amount syndrome secondary to the lymph nodes okay sir okay let us first see nerve valve see a maxilla 9 10 11 12 is very rare to to get involved if it get involved it's because of the nodes they no direct extension will cause that. okay, okay. you can get the uh, uh, 5 6 7 i mean 3 4 uh, which is the last node to get involved in the nodes and balances and this is malignant okay eighth nerve sir vestibular cochlear now vestibular cochlear okay it is seventh and eighth okay uh like right. what's your uh, did you did you palpate the uh, nasal lateral group yes sir there was did no you, fullness that is did you palpate the gingival buccal sulcus yes sir intra orally there was no fullness either was free palpate. did you palpate palate appeared yes sir no bony defects or no induration in the palate sir okay so 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 what's the diagnosis uh it's probably a malignant growth probably the right uh, maxillary sinus so okay tell me the, the difference in diagnosis of reddish mass in the left nasal cavity uh reddish nasal mass could be because of uh rhinosporidiosis you think it's or, rhinosporidiosis? Uh, not why so is, sir why why is it not rhinosporidiosis what is the classical appearance of rhinosporidiosis Uh, rhinosporidiosis usually uh, appears as a granular mass which is uh, reddish and has a strawberry like appearance and uh, on probing it will bleed on the under surface it has a sporangias you can see that white flecks of uh, spores it's like sheet like extension sheet like extension particularly with the the primary case usually it is attached to the any spur on the bony projections okay. it's a red, fiery red reddish granular mass with a sheet like like this projection readily easily bleed contact it contains white specks particularly on the under surface of the mass and is okay. attached to the nasal septum why it bleeds um, because of the granulation tissue present sir the contains extensive uh, new vascularization and contains lot of histamine this histamine will cause uh, vasodilatation and when it is injured it produces the pitaka is not the charter cell pcv okay then what okay. is the other difference in diagnosis uh, could be inverted papilloma sir inverted papilloma what age group it is common inverted papilloma is usually in the middle aged group sir third okay. to fifth decade Okay, it's more common on the fifth decade. Where the third decade starts? Thirty. Third decade is twenty-one to thirty years. Twenty years, you think you will get inverted papilloma? Not so. Sir. Then fourth and fifth decade. Okay. Okay. Sir. You you get it on fourth and fifth decade. Okay. So uh, okay. what is the appearance? Uh, inverted papilloma is usually a grayish mass sir uh, it has uh, finger like projections over it and uh, it is insensitive to touch and can also bleed on touch so the difference between and the usually wall arises from the lateral wall of nose lateral wall of nose at one particular area from there all the all the finger like projection comes out like a polyp not like a classical polyp it comes from the ethmoidal cavity but it arises from the lateral wall and the difference oh. between the poly uh, classical difference between the polyp and the inverted pap uh, inverted papilloma is inverted papilloma bleeds on touch and it is okay. unilateral so yes. when you when you pack the nose and take out the pack with the black bleeds and you do it gently till you see that blood on the pack you always think of inverted papilloma uh, okay then okay. what is the other difference the patient has got a smell disturbance what do you think in case of any uh, esthesia neuroblastoma or any olfactory 
what are the points against HTC neuroblastoma? Mm. Okay. 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 Site of the bilateral disease. Bilateral disease. This is reasonably okay. rare. A polypoidal lesion uh, only occurs on one nostril. What do you think? Polypoidal lesion could be an antrochoinal polyp, sir. Okay, then. And the fungus produces polyp. Yes, sir. What is that? Hey, which fungus produces polyp? Yeah? I mean, uh, poly unilateral polyposis with the uh, allergic mucin. What do you call that? Uh, invasive fungal sinusitis. Invasive. Allergic fungal sinusitis. AFRS. AFRS. AFRS, unilateral. Uh, but uh, classical polyp is bilateral. Okay. okay. Uh, if it occurs in the children, what will okay. be your differential diagnosis? Uh, reddish spot, fleshy mass occurs in children. In case of uh, an adolescent male, I would think of juvenile nasopharyngeofibroma. Okay, in children. Infants, children. Uh, in children, it could be uh, any uh, gliomas or uh, rhabdomyosarcomas. Rhabdomyosarcoma. Okay. And then other types of sarcoma. That is very common. Uh, okay. You can get other congenital mosses like meningocele, meningocele, or bilateral diseases like uh, um, cystic uh, fibrosis and, and conditions like that. Okay. 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 So, what do you think this is? Why do you say this is very good? So okay. keep all these things in your mind. Why do you say this is very good? Yes, sir. Uh, this patient uh, is having four months symptoms, which is progressive, is not uh, uh, waxing and waning, and has epistaxis along with it, and uh, has dental pain. So, how do you know it's, it's dental pain? Gum disease, teeth disease. You want me to ask what is radical? How do you get caries uh, uh, tooth? On examination, the patient didn't have any caries tooth or as such any. Did you check? Did you check? Did you check dental pain? Did you mm -hmm. did you did you do the tap test? What is his dental status? Whether Sorry. there is any any loosening of tooth, uh, irritating dentures, widening of the alveolar process? Nothing so, sir. Then how do you call this pain as dental pain? Why not this is sinusitis pain? An inverted papilloma affecting osteum producing the uh, uh, osteum resisting and can produce pain. Still, it can irritate the infraalveolar nerve or posterior superior or dental nerve can produce the pain. Yes, how, sir. Do you, how do you say this is malignant? Given on examination the appearance of the tumor, sir. So only that. Yes. Appearance sir. of the tumor. Yes. Yes. Oh, you can't say this is a female in our country. You can't expect them to smoke. Are exposed to any uh, other allergens, um, I mean, other uh, predisposing okay. factors. So, still, you feel it is malignancy, right? How will you confirm? Uh, I will do a diagnostic nasal endoscopy and uh, biopsy the mass. Can you, a, can, you do a, can you do an endoscopy in this patient? Uh, I will take a biopsy on this side, sir, on the right side. Of the mass. There is, is there a mass on the uh, right side? The mass is on the right side, so left side is. How do you know? How do you know diagnostic endoscopy on that mass side? Whole vestibule is filled with mass. How you put an endoscope inside? I visualized only the left nasal cavity, sir. Why you want to visualize the left nasal cavity? Uh, to see the. Uh, the status of the nasopharynx, coina, I, I septal. Asked you, I, I asked you, how did you take biopsy? You told me diagnostic nasal endoscopy and biopsy. Okay. okay. So you don't need a diagnostic nasal endoscopy to take a biopsy because it's a straightforward mass is looking at you. 
right? Yes, so yes, sir. What, what instrument you take? You used to take the bell. Um, punch forceps. That is for the lad. Sir. Instrument you use in your work you take bell, sir. Back as he says, straight back as. Sure. Or a true cut forceps. True cut. True cut. Or a. What's the what's the best punch forceps you you ever had in ENT? You take back from the tongue. You take back from the cheek. You take back from the palate. You take back from the nose. Nasal pharynx. Then we get. Somebody has told already. Lux forceps. Lux as well. Lux forceps. So lux forceps give you the better punch. No, you give a that's a that's a good punch forceps. So you use a use a lux forceps to to take the biopsy. All those days, whenever you see anything in the the nasal cavity, you take it with the with the lux forceps because lux forceps gives you the good leverage. Uh, Becasley is fine to take small small muscles like a polyp or a, or a very small muscle. Bigger muscles okay. always safer to take with the lux forceps. Of course, you can okay. take it with the with Becasley or a Uh, are two cutting forces okay so okay, how much by the is it approximately uh, size tissue you need size of the mass sir to be take at least 1 1 cm 2 cm like that uh, at least 2 uh, to 5 cc minimum i think so. melon seed take a tissue okay. size of a melon seed Okay. That should give you a biopsy report. What do you think will be the biopsy report? This could be uh, uh, given it is a female patient, sir. Could be adenoid cystic carcinoma, or could be even squamous cell carcinoma. Never could... give a rare diagnosis. Okay. Unless sir. unless you have a concrete evidence. Common thing is. Squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma. Yes. Can be a can be an adenoid carcinoma. Or adenoid cystic. Or it can be a cystic epidermal. Yes, sir. Com- common. There is nothing to say that it may be this. It may be this. Commonest thing is okay. squamous cell carcinoma. Yes, sir. Squamous cell carcinoma. You, how do you state this squamous cell carcinoma? Ah, uh, see, a max plus squamous cell carcinoma. It is in four stages: T one, T two, T three, T four. T one is when the tumor is uh, limited only to the maxilla okay. mucosa with the, no bony. Did you see the CT scan of the patient? Yes, sir. Have you have you have it here on a plate? I don't have it here. Okay, you you your classification got to be you want to do it on a, a clinical classification or a regular classification. How long the uh, both sir both clinic or radiological is the staging i would like to do okay right. this yeah. is out of history i put clinical but otherwise i would like to stage the disease both clinical or radiologically okay tell me according to that stage? yes t1 the max mucus with no bony erosion t2 is when the tumor has eroded uh, all walls of the maxilla but uh, not the posterior wall And T three is when the posterior wall of maxilla is eroded, and the tumor has gone to the telgopalatine fossa, and uh, also the tumor spreading to the uh, medial and uh, floor of orbit, and also ethmoid sinus, and also the tumor can spread anteriorly to the subcutaneous tissue, sparing the skin. And uh, T four A, uh, which is a moderately advanced uh, local disease, wherein this tumor. Uh, has uh, invaded the anterior orbital contents has gone to the frontal and sphenoid sinus uh, has come to the skin of the cheek has gone to the uh, infratemporal fossa has caused pterygoid plate erosion t4b is a very advanced local disease wherein this uh, tumor causes cranial nerve uh, involvement other than the uh, maxillary branch of trigeminal nerve has involved the nasopharynx has involved the clivus has involved the orbital apex has involved the dura has involved the cranial fossa cribriform plate yes yeah, so this is uh, and nodal status uh, and uh, as your uh, 
that area is a node. Sir? That area is a node. Node, sir. Any other any other node in the description, like the CA, CA larynx or uh, uh, type of larynx, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Same classification, like the any other nodal. nodal Same, method. yes, sir. Same okay. classification so as larynx or hypopharynx. What are the various uh, classifications of uh, anatomical interest? I mean, uh, historical uh, interest. Yes, what sir. Is? Uh, other classifications are ongrens and uh, Ledermans. Why, why, why ongrens classification? Ongerans uh, was for the prognosis of the disease earlier when uh, x rays were used, x ray lateral view was taken, and uh, an imaginary line was drawn from the medial canthal ligament to the angle of mandible. And any tumor which was posterior superiorly to this line had, uh, had a worse prognosis because of its uh, proximity to the vital structures, and antero inferior had a better prognosis. So this was Ongren's uh, classification. Uh, another classification is a uh, Ladderman's classification, sir. Uh, here, wherein the famous, uh, I mean, the maxillary region was divided into nine quadrants uh, with the help of uh, two horizontal lines of Sebelio and two vertical lines. Uh, the vertical lines passed along the medial orbital wall and the horizontal line, the first one was uh, along the floor of orbit and the second is along the floor of nasal cavity. So it is divided it into a suprastructure, mesostructure, and infrastructure, sir. What is there in infrastructure? Infrastructure, uh, we have the floor of maxilla and the alveolar ridges. So floor of the maxilla uh, is below the level of the floor of the nasal cavity. Okay. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Uh, so the, the nasal structure is alveolus as well as the uh, oral, uh, corresponding oral cavity of the CA maxilla. Okay. When will be the uh, when the at birth? What will be the level of the floor of the, the maxilla? How the floor of the, the maxillary level changes with the age? Yeah. Uh, at birth, actually, the maxillary sinus is uh, above the nasal cavity floor, and with age, as the maxillary sinus tends to grow out, it uh, comes to about thirty cc. At that time, the floor of uh, nasal cavity is tends to be higher than the floor of maxilla, sir. Will it become uh, again go to the level of the nasal cavity? What happens is that even with individual old age, in edentulous patients, that the size of that nasal uh, infrastructure will get reduced, so that significance will come down. Okay, okay, sir. okay uh, sir. what is Sibelius classification? Sir? What is Sibelius classification? What is Harrison's classification? Harrison's, sir. What is modified Harrison's classification? What is AJC classification? What is systems classification? Max theory, sinus. Max, parents, parents, and his malignancy has got humpty number of classifications. Yes, sir. Only the medial wall of maxilla is involved initially. Which, which classification? Uh, I think it is the Harrison's. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, sir. Harrison is medial wall and then inferior wall without bone erosion. Then inferior wall with the bone erosion. Yes, sir. Then, uh, all other walls except posterior wall, then goes into yeah. the, uh, the posterior wall, nasal pharynx, pterygoid uh, plates, and the uh, orbital lipids. Okay. Uh, uh, but uh, these are all more or less uh, uh, close to, uh, closely related. First, they have, they have described the uh, nasal, nasal masses and the paranasosinesis masses. And then uh, paranasosinesis includes uh, ethmoids, orbit, uh, it might maxilla and everything thing together, and slowly each and every classification has got some defects. Is all everything was uh, 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 was corrected. So they what is uh, thought to be far advanced disease is uh, stepped down to the advanced disease, and the advanced disease has stepped up to the far advanced disease. And now what you have is that AJC classification. What you told us. So how do you how do you investigate the patient? 
I would like to investigate the patient. Uh, I you take a biopsy first, sir. Okay. And uh, I would uh, do radiological imaging. So as the screening technique, I might uh, take uh, X-rays. What uh, X-ray? X-ray uh, waters view, uh, lateral skull view, and uh, base of skull view. I would like to take. Okay. And uh, I would uh, like to take a contrast enhanced CT as well. And uh, X-ray, you are not serious. What are the X-rays you take? Uh, waters view, lateral. What you what you see on the waters view? Waters view we see for the triple line of Beckler C, sir. Okay. Wherein, uh, the this indicates. Uh, we look for the posterior maxillary wall, which appears as a S-shaped line, and uh, the lateral orbital rim appears as a C-shaped uh, line, and uh, the greater ring of sphenoid is also joining this. So any distortion in this uh, indicates there is a posterior wall erosion or the tumor has spread to the pterygopalatine fossa. Which X-ray you see this? Uh, this is in the base of skull view, sir. Yes, sir. What do you see on X-ray panel? See a macula. Yes, sir. On X-ray paranasal sinus, uh, in case of this malignant tumor, uh, there would be erosion appreciated. There could be opacification of the sinus, and there could be expansion of the sinus, and this disease could be extending beyond. As okay, well. you want to see the posterior wall of macula, which which you will take. Posterior wall of maxilla, as we said, we can take the base of skull for triple line of Beckley or even lateral skull base view can be taken. Yes, lateral skull, skull lateral. can be taken. Okay. Skull okay. So there are four views are very important. One is a front yes. model. Second is the X-ray uh, that pan as a sinuses. X-ray uh, lateral lateral skull view. Then X-ray X-ray base of skull. X-ray base of skull will look like a CT scan. So it was preferred on those days. However, so after an advent of CT scan, we don't use uh, all these things. Which, which CT scan you will take? Uh, contrast enhanced uh, CT, sir. Okay, why? PNS. Okay, why? Why? Uh, is to look for the site of uh, this tumor, to look for the extension of the tumor, look for any bony erosions will be well uh, pronounced in CT than MRI. And uh, look for a uh, uh, for that, sir. And uh, you want to see whether it goes to the uh, base of skull. Vital skull structures skull. has been involved or not. Also, nodule. Okay, sir. Brain, brain extension, nasopharyngeal extension, orbital, pterygoid plate, pterygoid plate. All these things in your in your classification. Yes, so and also nodal it. nodal stage, nodal staging can be done with CT, nodal. sir. Note we have seen already how to look in a in the CT scan. If the um uh, cribriform plate is eroded, what do you do? Cribriform plate is eroded, sir. Uh, any, other, any other investigation you do? I would like to do an MRI, sir. MRI. Okay. So yes, sir. MRI, which is better? C C T or MRI? Uh, MRI is better, sir. Actually, both together gives better uh, idea yes, of mapping the disease. Complement, it's complementary. Yes, because yes. it occurs inside the bony cavity, always CECT is preferred to look for the bony erosions. But uh, soft tissue extensions, MRI is useful. You have seen that uh, very well when you are uh, dealing with this mucormycosis, huge amount of mucormycosis. When you take, yes. a, take a CT scan, when it looks very normal, you take an MRI, it looks entirely, entirely the different. If you take an MRI, you see an absence, yes, you would definitely need a, a, a CT scan for your approach. So both the things are all complementary to, to each other. Any other diagnosis okay. you do? Um, yes, sir. I would uh, like to do a PET CT in case of uh, to rule out any distant meds or to look for second primaries. Okay. Mm. Uh, in case of any angio, uh, CT angiography, sir, uh, digital subtraction angiographies can be taken in case of skull base erosions planning treatment. 
Okay. Uh, One minute. Maybe it's uh, to be completed. Uh, radiology before biopsy. Maybe before biopsy, even after biopsy, because this mass is outside. Uh, then uh, why you want to defer to complete involvement to say whether the patient has got if it is uh, C4A or B. If it is both up to the skull uh, base, you got to, to do the uh, check for skull uh, to be complete. Okay. So uh, with this, uh, what will you do for the patient? Huh? What will you do for the patient? Yes, sir. Uh, surgery will be the management of choice, sir. No, you take an MRI. What is the situation? It will be there inside. It is an MRI. will tell you where the mass is. Yes, sir. Uh, to see the operability uh, of the tumor, sir, first. No, this is this is very small tumor. It will operate. Anyway, it's yes. operable. CA maxilla surgery is surgery. Uh, CA maxilla management is surgery, surgery, surgery. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, uh, sir. So, uh, if you take the uh, take the patient, uh, you take a uh, CT scan. CT scan told, uh, tells you opacification of the maxilla. And you do an MRI, it's only fluid. What will you do then? Or if it is uh, the whole thing is full of uh, 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 full of mass. Classical T2. Then what do you do? That's what I asked you. Uh, okay, sir. So with MRI, we can better delineate the tumor tissue and the secretions, sir. Understand. So in case of it is going to be only secretions, okay, uh, then I will do an uh, sir in yeah, yeah. in case yes, sir. With MRI, I can delineate the tumor mass from secretions, sir. So okay. in case of it is uh, only secretions. Uh, I will do a uh, functional endoscopic sinus surgery, sir, if there is no okay. mass at all with CT or MRI. And okay. uh, in case of uh, a tumor present, in case of this uh, tumor, uh, I would like to do a total maxillectomy, sir, given the patient has clinically N0 neck. So if it is T1, what is it? Uh, T1, uh, if this tumor is T1 and involves only the medial wall, we can do a medial maxillectomy, sir. Or in case it has come only to the palate, we can do an inferior maxillectomy, How sir. How will you do? There is nothing in palate. This patient will not only lateral nasal wall or you okay. say that there is the okay, okay, sir. Okay. How will you do? How will you do? What are the indications for uh, medial maxillectomy? Uh, uh, in the, suppose if it is a malignant tumor like this, in case of low-grade tumors, sir, we can do medial maxillectomy or any other benign lesions. If it turns out to be a benign lesion, we can do medial maxillectomy. So what is the low-grade malignancy you know of? Low-grade malignancy is uh, low-grade adenocarcinomas, uh, adenoid cystic, sir. Adenoid cystic carcinoma. What is low-grade adenocarcinoma? Uh, adenocarcinoma uh, has two types, sir. It is intestinal adenocarcinoma and sinonasal non-intestinal type. Uh, usually, because of any occupational exposure, it is uh, uh, usually the high-grade intestinal type which occurs. And in case of a sinonasal uh, non-intestinal type, it could be even meds from the renal cell carcinoma. We have to rule out that as well. So in case of low-grade tumor of sinonasal uh, adenocarcinoma, I would like to do a medial max selectomy, sir. How will you do the uh, so this is uh, taking the lateral wall of nose completely along with the lamina papricia also with the inferior turbinate. So uh, this could be done uh, if the tumor is very small and very low grade and it is very limited, we can do endoscopic as well. This but in case it is, uh, we this can do a, if it is only medial, in case of a medial uh, uh, maxillary wall tumor, we can do a lateral rhinotomy approach, sir. More lateral rhinotomy incision, we can approach the medial maxillary wall and the nasal how cavity. How will you do a, a, a lateral rhinotomy approach? Where do you make incision? Uh, so the incision is made along the ala and the root of the nose, along the ala and uh, the 
root of nose uh, it will put it on a uh, nasal labial groove or just medial to it you make a vertical line along the uh, lateral yes. nasal uh, yes, lateral wall of the projecting part then points around the tela yes okay sir. that's called modified moose incision moose yes. incision is placed on the nasal labial groove uh, okay, uh, okay then okay, uh, uh, once you make the incision what do you do where will you get that bleeding from facial artery we could come across angular vein angular vein okay sir okay what is the uh, venous drainage of the the face uh the angular vein becoming the facial vein and then we have the retromandibular vein all these drains into the internal jugular vein sir supra orbital joint yes it's called yes, the sir. penis system of w and y right supra orbital supra cochlear down angular vein angular okay, vein sir. continues as an anterior facial vein supra yes, uh, uh, retromandibular vein how the retromandibular vein is formed internal maxillary and the supra cochlear temporal joint together to form the retromandibular Retroman vein yes sir retromandibular vein divides into anterior and posterior divisions posterior division joins with the uh, occipital and uh, continuous as an external jugular Okay, anterior border of uh, anterior uh, anterior branch of um, uh, uterine medial vein joins with the anterior facial vein to form the common facial vein, which drains in the internal jugular. Internal vein. jugular vein. Okay. So you can injure the on the on the angular vein. Is there an angular vein? Okay. So uh, once you uh, uh, deepen the the thing, then what do you do? Uh, after deepening the incision, sir, we will elevate the cheek flap, sir. We will. Okay. Uh... You are not doing maxillary. You are doing medial maxillary. Yes. So you just elevate it adequately. Adi you want to okay, elevate sir. like a cheek flap. Okay. Just sir. adequately enter the nasal cavity, identify yes, the mark. Uh, you with a with a drill or a or a chisel cut the okay. anterior wall of maxilla just adjacent to the. Uh, uh, your natural lateral nasal wall, removing end block extension of the inferior turbinate and the um, lamina, uh, medial uh, wall of the maxilla and the lamina of the bridge. Okay. Sir. Okay. So okay. remove everything together. That is medial maxillectomy. The other alternative for the medial maxillectomy is particularly for the inverted papilloma. So with the inverted papilloma, what do you do? Uh, we can do a mid facial degloving approach. What are you doing? You are talking about another thing. Yes, sir. Inverted papilloma. What are you talking about? Endoscopic medial mastectomy. Yes, sir. Then why are you thinking? Yes. Okay, sir. You do an endoscopic medial mastectomy. What are the what are the types of endoscopic medial mastectomy? Uh, only uh, uh, middle meatal androstomy. Then, no. Uh, no. Mega androstomy. That is not middle meatal androstomy. Okay. Bleeding began in anterior end of middle turbinate, zooming along with the uh, transecting the uh, 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 nasal lacrimal. And that's the end of removal of everything. Okay, that is type one, type two, and type three. Okay. Uh, so if it's the, the benign tumor, low grade benign tumor, how will you? So if it's a complete tumor, how will you do maxillectomy? Ah. Uh, the maxillectomy. Total maxillectomy, sir. Okay. Uh, it will be an open approach. Ah, uh, Weber Ferguson incision will be made. Uh, the same Moore's lateral uh, rhinotomy incision with an extension subciliarly, uh, two to three mm below the lower eyelid margin, and also extending to the lip, making a lip uh, splitting incision, and taking this incision sublabially to the palate and dividing the palate in midline between the two uh, uh, palatine process of maxilla, 
and dividing it uh, from the hard palate and soft palate junction and going around the third uh, molar tooth uh, and uh, elevating the cheek flap and identifying the infraorbital nerve and maybe we can see the facial artery so make an incision on the sublabial sublabial yes okay. sir okay so you you split the lip go go sublabially go to a third, third molar more. right third yeah. molar uh, soft palate artery junction come to the midline from the midline just uh, just lateral to the uh, the midline you make the incision expose the bone all around okay yes then, sir then what do you do uh uh that how, far you, yeah. how far you you elevate your, your cheek flap uh, we are going to disarticulate it from the zygomatic uh, processor so we'll have to visualize the zygoma okay. and uh, next you have to uh, do the uh, periosteal elevation from the floor of orbit how will you how will you how will you protect the uh, orbital content mm, uh, we have to uh, dissect the orbicularis oculizer leave behind some of the orbicular is oculi to give it some height and protection to the lower lid and uh, you use spoon spoon can be used to retract the periosteal uh, elevation if there is orbit is pad orbital bone is intact elevated it with the periosteum then you keep a small spoon there yes, so that you don't injure the orbital content then how will you do the okay, after uh, yes sir and then uh, after uh, delineating the zygoma we'll have to identify the uh, infraorbital uh, inferior orbital fissure and also the pterygomaxillary fissure so we're going to put one uh, osteotomy there and uh, another one is uh, the frontal process of maxilla okay so we're going to use either uh, um, and also we have to separate the maxilla from the pterygoid plates as well sir i'll take one yeah Palate is also cut. Sir. Yes, sir. as already we said, the incision we have to cut along the incision. So palate is also separated. How? 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 We can use a uh, giggly saw, sir. A wired instrument. We can use, or now we can use this oscillatory uh, saw, which comes with a blade. Giggly saw will you hook? Uh, it it has two handles to hold, sir. You have um. Wire is passed along. Passed along. It passed along the inferior orbital fissure to come out of the pterygomaxillary fissure, sir. That is called lateral. Yes, sir. Palate. Palate. Uh, posteriorly, we have cut around the third molar tooth, sir, and we'll have to dissect the masseter. Midline palate. How will you cut? Midline palate. Uh, we have uh, we have separated the frontal process of maxilla sir hey is that it happened there part of last is gone there yes sir how will you cut you have to remove a teeth sir uh, okay. which level i want to cut i okay. will have to remove the teeth Along that, oh. you have to start cutting. How? You, don't you have to giggly, elevate sir. the mucus, sir. How do you use the giggly saw? This is not like like mucor mucus. It's a normal oh, bone, hard bone. How will you cut? You don't have an offsetting saw. Take a take a cow that you possess. Go along the the floor of the nasal cavity. Go to the dark palate, dark palate junction. Push it inside so that it will come out through the through, through the oral cavity. Uh, put the Put the handle of the uh, put the giggly sus wire inside that uh, uh, that process. Bring it to the to the nasal cavity. Apply the handle, then cut it through. Okay, yes. or you use an oscillatory saw. Okay, so okay. that will cut the palate. That will cut the uh, uh, zygoma. Uh, that will articulate zygoma, and then it will uh, uh, cut the uh, uh, cut the uh, from the nasal process. Okay. So that will make the maxilla yes. attached to the uh, posteriorly to the pterygoid plate and the pterygoid plate and the masseter muscle. So use the cloud osteotome to uh, dislodge it, and then use a heavy scissors to to cut the 
the muscular attachment what forces do kids use to use and forces to pull the macula what is that sir i don't get sir what they used to uh you used to uh, uh pull the macula shake and pull it out no yes so sir you used to have a forces what forces is that Percussions, lion tooth, the maxillary can be forced. It will be like this. Yes, sir. You you hold it, yes, you pluck it, and take it out. Okay. Then what will happen? Once you remove the whole of a of a maxillary, what do you see generally? Uh, the infra orbital now will be anchored, sir. We'll have to cut it. Okay, that remove the maxilla out. And uh, we in case for this it is only the limited to the maxilla, sir. In case the tumor is a T three or T four A tumors, or the tumor, we'll have to look for finish, other places. Finish, finish maxilla. We love profuse bleeding. Yes, sir. From where? Uh, it could be because of the pterygoid venous plexus. It could be venous bleeding, sir. So we'll have to pack it with uh, hot uh, saline. Hot saline. Yes, it will be an internal artery artery, but the commonest place is the pterygoid plexus. Yes, pterygoid plexus gushes, so you pack it with the hot saline pads. Keep a yes, hot sir. saline pads that will cause uh, thermal injury, and uh, this will cause uh, tissue thromboblast injury, and the bleeding will be arrested in few 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 minutes. Okay, then what will you do? If there is any any bleeding point, you catch it, ligate it, or You just pour it. Uh, yes. Sir. Then what do you do, sir? Uh, in case of any other extension, sir, in the pterygoid oh, plate erosion or need to need to do what do you how what do you do next? T mm. two. This is what you do next. Yes, sir. After uh, removing the maxilla. uh we can think of an obturator to be placed in case of an or we can pack it with gutta percha sir packing the nose after uh, hemostasis we want to pack it we got to pack the nose yes sir to an, to an anti nasal packing and the and the post nasal packing before that in the right to then how will you pack the child right how will you pack the child we can use gutta percha sir And use the data percha. What is called? It will give support. Pump pump. Okay. Then you use a operator. What operator is that called? What are the types of operator? Ah, uh, operators ah uh, can be immediate or surgical operators. Could be transient or intermediate operators. Could be definitive or uh, permanent operators, sir. And the so, advantage of advantage of surgical operators. uh surgical operators have the advantage of uh, supporting the uh, cavity after surgery so that we can pack easily sir and also the patient can have immediate oral feeds it helps in feeding and also the patient has a better uh, uh, speech okay so improves in speech improves in uh, uh, patient can can be started oral immediately and patient yes. can have a better hemostasis chance Okay. Yes. So, uh, yes. what do you do next? Mm. When will you start work? Ah, uh, the uh, Riles tube feed can be started uh, after after the patient comes out of anesthesia, sir. After oh. four to six hours after six anesthesia. Hours. Not not comes out of anesthesia. No, sir. Six after six hours, hours of uh, surgery. and okay. uh, in case we have uh, given an obturator we can try oral feeding uh it still you love rice too because of yes, it can, can dislodge after the not fit properly and yes, they sir. would have, they would have planned it put on the incisor you would have uh, inadvertently or accidentally <laughs> taken out the incisor teeth so it not fit properly so with yes, seeing sir. all these things in your mind you can still have a have a rice to start rice to feeding once the patient can yes. take food orally we start giving Let me call it puts under fluids orally. Okay. 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 Then uh, when will you remove the data percha? Uh, will you will you, remove... will you put a skin graft? Will you put the data percha straight on the uh, the muscles or you keep something there? Will you give a flap? 
to be that chilling effect not necessarily no sir of uh in case the patient is anticipated for a um, brachytherapy not brachytherapy actually if you want you can put a, a skin graft or you can you can you can close the the cavity with the uh muscle slab okay you can use the uh, uh you can reconstruct okay, okay but uh, you can you can, you can reconstruct but the problem is uh you got to be doubly sure about your cancer clearance and the post operative care if you are not sure for example there is a nectar uh mastery spread it's not advisable to uh, do it immediately so that okay. case you keep a uh gauze is made with uh, medicated uh, ointment what do you call that okay. sofratil sofratil yes, and then okay. put that uh, put the sofratil on top of that you put the beta percha and the this thing so okay. Fourth day, fifth day, you can remove this and remove the beta uh, percha. Uh, if you don't keep uh, this thing, the sofra tool, it will get stuck and it will be very difficult to extract that beta percha. Okay, once you have you have you have removed it, wash the area, reapply the. Uh, if you want, you 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 again uh, pack it with the with the beta percha to give a contour, and then you can can keep the surgical operator. So that uh, when you remove the pack uh, after five to seven days, sir. Nasal pack. Nasal pack in three days we can remove, sir. Within three days. Post up the uh, post nasal pack. Depending on the next day. Next day. Uh, uh, nasal pack third day when you are uh, removing the gutta percha to gutta percha. The wash. Okay. okay. Then. Uh, uh, Penile, penile given intermittent process. Ah, uh, ah, uh, seven to ten days after surgery, we can give. So intermittent the... processes is not a not a must. We can we can given a if you give a good uh, uh, surgical process, we can directly go for permanent processes. So okay, till uh, till one month to three months, we can give a. Permanent processes once it is healed completely. Okay. okay so, okay, uh, what are the uh, uh, so uh, how will you follow up the case? Follow up the case, sir. Uh, after surgery, uh, uh, after four to six weeks, when it has healed, we will go for radiotherapy. And after radiotherapy, the patient has to be followed for uh, once in three months for the first year. And after that, how much? Uh, how much radiation therapy? Radiation therapy is around the sixty to seventy grays, sir. Hey, you give only thirty to to forty grays because it is very close to all the the right structures like orbit and the brain stem and brain. So you give only thirty to to forty forty grays. You don't go for a full full blown the sixty grays unless it is a specific indications like the improper. Removal in the infant temple. So, after the third or fourth month, those cases you will do only that IMR. Normal, normal, normal uh, anterior and uh, uh, lateral radiation uh, radiation ports. You, you don't give more than thirty two uh, to forty grade. Okay. Okay, sir. I so meant the, IMR, sir. IMR is sixty to seventy can be given okay. for the tumor bed. Okay. Then. Yes. Uh, 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 Then you give a, a process. Okay. Then what is breaky therapy? Um, breaky therapy is when we want to use uh, radium implants, sir, rod like mm-hmm. implants, and uh, for very specific target tissues, we will keep it there for high dosing. Hmm. And uh, where do you keep? You can have a in the in your uh, in your processes. You can have a. uh special holes for that and you can just keep it there yes so you need a the permanent process permanent processes will have a teeth also yes sir okay so what is sandwich therapy okay. sandwich therapy is the giving radiotherapy pre operatively and post operatively as well sir how much mm.
2000 rats pre operatively four week cap do the surgery 4000 rats uh, 2000 rats post operatively what is the advantage of uh, pre operative radiotherapy pre operative uh, radiotherapy uh, in case of inoperable uh, lesions sir giving radiotherapy might convert into an operable uh, smaller tumor and also the tumor margins can be sterilized with the radiotherapy okay which is the and the vascularity decrease of the aggressive uh, bulk of, of the tumor it can downstage that, the tumor that's why that is too much thinking that's what you told us the first reason yes huh? sir what are the drawbacks of pre operative rt pre operative rt is uh, the patient is more prone to wound infection uh, during surgery after radiation and in case of planning of flap the flap might not take very well in case of planning for vascular flaps and uh, also in case of uh, giving radiotherapy the margins might shrink sir so the microscopic tumors uh, remnants might be left behind no, so no, that no. might that do not really be a microscopic tumor but the, even if there is a tumor tumor shrinkage uh, you got to uh, in spite of tumor shrinkage you got to do the surgery for the original tumor okay, okay pre operative tumor the problem is the tissue planes will be be lost dissection will be uh, be difficult so uh, complete excision you cannot be consonantly consonantly this state but the uh, it is easier for the tumor uh, uh, tumor sterilization so that uh, spread due to the handling of tissue will be will not be, be very high Spill. okay sir. okay and then uh, um, if it is an inoperable tumor what will be so when you when you do the tumor and, uh, when you have a, when you have a defect in the which skull base how will you manage a skull base uh, defect we can uh, uh, do a flap sir pericranial flap in case we are doing a craniofacial resection either endoscopically or open we can reconstruct it with a pericranial flap or temporoparietal flap defect, defect can be classified as small defect uh, large defect okay sir yes sir large defect midline defect lateral defect yes what sir. do you do for what for a uh, small defect we use things like a fat cart- cartilage other other flap something okay like sir that. yes okay. sir if yes, it's sir. a huge defect you do a central defect you give a pericranial flap yes sir Lateral defect, pericardial Tempor- flap, or a temporoparietal flap. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what are all the uh, various types of craniofacial resection? Craniofacial resection can be anterior, posterior craniofacial resection. Uh, posterior. It could be open up, op- posterior. Anterior craniofacial resection, lateral craniofacial resection. Oh yes, sir. So, anterior craniofacial resection. What are all the various? Uh, approaches Very approaches yes sir it can be both endoscopic or it can be done open sir open uh, uh, it can be a transfrontal approach sir transfrontal transcribri form okay transplanar okay transtubercular and uh, transspinoidal sir transfrontal transcribri form transplanar Trans- transtubercular transplanar transtubercular then transspinoidal sir transcellular then transclival transorientoid yes so these are all the the various things we is not not going into the cranial facial resection endoscopic cranial resection cranial facial resection now okay so lateral lateral defects are only of it the take of completion lat what is fish 1 fish 2 fish 3 okay forget about it that, that's later so if the page the tumor is inoperable what will you do uh, the tumor might be inoperable in case of cranial nerve involvement optic chiasm involvement prevertebral fascia involvement or uh, 
any intracranial involvement so in those cases we might uh, do a new adjuvant chemo radiotherapy the surgery is not uh, possible we, we send the patient for palliation palliative therapy okay uh, what do you think is the high survival rate of the patient uh, in case of uh, t1 tumor sir the fire survival is around 50 to 55% in case of a t4 tumor it is around 25 to 27% p3 t4 t3 it is a uh, the t1 tumor itself two year survival is 80% sir five year it becomes 50 and a uh, uh, t2 will be lesser than that sir around 40% and uh, t3 is even lesser sir around 30 something and okay. t4 is 25 what, to 27 what are the types of maxillectomy uh, and types of maxillectomy is uh, partial maxillectomy sir which can be medial or inferior sir and uh, total maxillectomy as we said and uh, radical maxillectomy where in the maxilla is taken along with the orbital excentration sir how would you do on and uh, uh, we have to make a, a lid sparing incision sir and along with the periorbita all the orbital contents are uh, removed sir and uh, Where do you put the incision? How do you elevate the flap? Uh, how do you identify uh, orbital apex? Uh, how do you what will you do to the optic nerve, optal nerve pathway? You have seen max like you have seen orbital excentration, right? You have seen orbital excentration. Yes, sir. In new core micros. And then how many? How many you have? What do you do? Make an incision. Along the ring, elevate the orbit. Keep elevating the orbit. Uh, uh, strip the radiation. You yes. identify superior orbit pressure. Go go all around the, the superior and inferior orbit pressure. You will see your your mass anchoring on the optic nerve and the uh, superior orbit pressure. Use a cow dot reflector. Discuss it with your uh, 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 this one uh, the cautery and give a ligature. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So, sir. what do you do to the socket? The socket uh, has to be packed, sir. Did you With put a glass? Can you put a glass? Like, did you uh, lid skin or not? Ah, uh, you preserve the lid. Yes, Line sir. Line it with the skin graft so that in future you can give an artificial life. Okay. Sir. Okay. So uh, this is all orbital excentration. What is manipulation? What is manipulation? We make a, a sclerocorneal junction in incision, sir, and uh, remove all the orbital contents out. is uh, in nucleation using a scoop okay. remove the orbital and the evisceration to remove the okay. remove the uh, globe leaving the uh, periorbital uh, orbital contents is the uh, 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 in nucleation right so um, what is extended radical maxillectomy uh, extended radical maxillectomy is when uh, the tumor has uh, spread to other sinuses or a pterygoid plate has to be excised along with it or the infratemporal force of clearance to be given this will all can be called a extended maxillectomy so radical maxillectomy extended radical maxillectomy okay um, what is the chemotherapeutic agency we use uh, chemotherapeutic agency Uh, we can give um, cis platin. We can give platinum analogs. We can give taxins like paclitaxel or docetaxel. Uh, we can give um, five fluoroacetyl. Uh, it's usually given in uh, three cycles, sir. 
can be in after three weeks uh, duration between each cycle, one, 22 and 43 days. Or this can be split up as a weekly regimen as well for lesser toxicity and better toleration. What are the uh, toxicity of uh, uh, chemotherapy? What are uh, the things you will monitor? Uh, yeah, these chemotherapeutic drugs can cause autotoxicity, can cause uh, suppression of uh, myelogenic suppression, myelosuppression, uh, so oh, we have to lose the blood values. What is the most sensitive uh, uh, this one? Uh, count? Uh, what is the most sensitive count? Uh, DCDG and platelet counts. Okay. Total count, difference in count and platelet counts. Okay. Uh, then you look for bleeding time and blood time. Uh, check, the, check the patient's uh, 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 blood cell. Okay. What other uh, precautions will you take? What are the, what are the complications? As you are vomiting, air fall. Okay, sir. How will you manage air fall? Uh, I give the patient to be a bit artificially. Okay, sir. Okay, I think with this, uh, we have discussed almost everything. Uh, Harsha? Yeah, I'm here, sir. Yeah, I, I, I think anything else, any other questions, anything got to be answered? Sir, I think you have covered extensively, sir. You even went beyond the nose. <laughs> mm. I think, sir, first, first time. <laughs> Yesterday and all, we was a little busy. Sir, uh, we got a uh, lot of work going on. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Even for me, it is very, I, uh, I have, uh, as you know, we are getting the group practice. I can schedule my uh, evening appointments, but uh, it's not possible for, for everyone, busy persons like Johnny Graham or uh, active persons like you, I understand. So, uh, uh, Anjali, thank you. Thank you very much. You have done well. Uh, thank but there you, are, sir. There are a few areas you got to be fluent. And uh, yes. uh, so that uh, you will come up with flying colors. Okay, thank you, Asha. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You can give us a, a concluding remark. Thank you, sir. Uh, as is, uh, this is our sex, uh, second time we are doing uh, <coughs> grand dots, and uh, I'm sure a lot of PGs will be going for uh, uh, practical examinations in the coming few weeks. In our state, uh, I think the uh, theory exams are from next week. So I'm sure most PGs would be benefited. And uh, as such, when I was in my PG, we never had this opportunity. And uh, <coughs> We are really thankful to you, sir, uh, for spending your valuable time. And uh, we hope uh, you'll come forward for again uh, next year's Grand Dons. Thank you. Thank you, Asha. We look forward to see you there. And uh, we also I'll come and see you in next week. I'll come there next week. Thank you, sir. I'm interested in some more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for your uh, Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Good night.